In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the displacement modifier to displace your 3D mesh in Blender. Now, if you want to use the material displacements in the node editor, then I have a separate tutorial on how to do that, and I'll have a link in the description to that video. But in this video, I will show you how to use the displacement modifier. And the material displacements won't work in the EV rendering engine, but the displacement modifier will work in both Cycles and EV because you can see it's actually displacing the vertices here in the viewport. So I downloaded this brick texture from ambientcg.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it, and I just added it to this plain object, and I added the base color and the roughness and the normal. And this material also comes with a displacement map, so I'll show you how to add the displacement to this object using the displace modifier. And I'll also show you how to add procedural textures to the displacement modifier as well. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that your object is somewhat high poly, because right now I have this plane, but this plane only has four vertices, and so the displacement modifier will have very little geometry to use to actually displace the mesh. So for an object like this with a plane, I can tab to go into edit mode, and I can press the A key to select everything. And then I can use the object context menu, and I can click on the subdivide button. So I use the right click select in Blender, so I hit the W key, but you can just right click and then click on subdivide. And you can just continue to do that and give your object much more geometry. Or what you could also also do is you could go to the modifier properties you could click on add modifier and here under generate you can add the subdivision surface modifier or you could do some of both like what I'm doing here so I'm going to subdivide the mesh so it's somewhat detailed but then I'm also going to use the subdivision surface modifier to give it even more geometry now if you look right here on the edges you can see that the edges are kind of round and that's because of the subdivision surface modifier so it is rounding out the edges so if you don't want the subdivision surface modifier to smooth and round out the geometry, then you can change the Catmull Clark to simple instead. And so this way the object will keep its shape, but it will still be subdivided. Like if I added the subdivision surface modifier to a cube, you can see that it is adding more geometry, but it is rounding it. So I could instead just change it to simple and now it will still subdivide it, but it will keep the object shape. So now we need to add the displacement modifier. So let's click on add modifier and here under deform, we can add the displace modifier. And you can see that it's just going to move it up and that's because we haven't added any texture into the displace modifier and also one really important thing make sure that the displace modifier is after the subdivision surface because if it's above the subdivision surface it will first displace it and then add the subdivision but I want the subdivision to give the displacement more detail so I first want it to subdivide it then I want it to displace it because the modifiers work in order so it will first use the first modifier and then the next modifier and continue to go down on the modifier step so I'm going to make sure the displacement modifier is after the subdivision. So we now need to add in a texture here. So I can just click on new to add a new texture. So you could add a procedural texture or you could use a texture map. I'm going to show you how to do both of them. So first we're going to add a procedural texture. So you can see that we have a texture right here, but we need to actually give it some sort of texture. So what you can do is click on this button right here, and this will just jump you down over here to the texturing properties. And then right here on the type, it is set to image or movie so we'll be using this later but I'm first going to show you how to add a procedural texture so we can click on the type here and we can change this instead to any of blenders procedural textures so we have clouds that's pretty much like a procedural noise we also have like musgrave or like wood or there's many other textures here there's even like a marble one I am going to use clouds in this case so let's choose clouds and then you can change some more of the settings right here like with the noise basis and the type you can play play around with these to get some different noise. So I'm going to turn the depth up to like 30 so that it is very detailed and just play around with your procedural texture. And then also I'm going to use the object context menu to shade the object smooth. Now this is really strong, so to make the displacement less strong, we can just click right back here to the modifier properties. And then we can just turn the strength down on the displace modifier. And now we have a nice displacement with that procedural clouds. And I could also turn up the subdivision, so I could turn up the viewport and renders to like four if I wanted much more detail, or if I wanted less detail, I could turn the subdivision down. So that is how you add a procedural texture into the displacement with the displace modifier. But I'm now gonna show you 
how to add in a texture because I want to add in the displacement texture that came with this material from Ambient CG. So again, I've subdivided the mesh so that it has some detail, and then I've also added the subdivision surface modifier. So then with this object selected, let's click on add modifier, and under deform we can add the displace modifier. And then let's click on new here to add a new texture. And then to load in the texture, we can click right here, and this is going to jump us over to the texturing panel. And then right here on the type here, you can see it's set to image or movie. So then right down here, we can click on open and open up the displacement texture. And again, link will be in the description if you'd like to download the same texture that I'm using from Ambient CG. This is the Bricks 002. So I'm going to select the displacement texture that comes with the material, and then I can click on open image. And then because this is a displacement texture, it's not contributing to the base color of the material. So I'm just going to take the color space here and turn this to non-color. So now that we've added this back in, I can go right back over here to the modifier properties and I can just turn the strength down because it is a bit too strong. I'm going to go back to solid view and then I'll turn the strength down. So for this texture, maybe just like a 0.1 or a 0.2 will look pretty good. And then I can go into the material preview to see that. So there we go. We now have some much more realistic bricks because the the bricks are actually popping out. And again, if you want to make them more detailed, you could turn up the subdivision right here, or in edit mode, you could tab into edit mode, and you could use the object context menu and subdivide it. But I'm going to turn up the levels viewport and render. So I could like turn this up to four if I wanted it to be very detailed, but that's actually getting a little bit laggy. So I will turn the levels viewport and render just down to like three. Now let's say I wanted to change the UV mapping of the texture. So right now I have the texture coordinate and the UV is going into to all the textures on the material. So if I go right over here to the UV editing tab, I can go into edit mode and let's say I wanted less bricks so I could like scale this way down so that there are less bricks. And now if I go right back over here to the shading workspace, you can see that the displacement hasn't adapted with the change that I did in the UV editor. So to fix this, we need to click right back over here on the modifier properties. And you can see the displacement has coordinates. So right now it is set to local, but I want it to align up with the colors in the material. So I can take the coordinates and I can instead change this to UV because I am using the UV mapping to place the textures. And now you can see that the displacement texture has adapted with the material's textures. So that is how you use the displacement modifier in Blender to displace your objects. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch my other tutorial on how to use the material displacements, then you can check out that video with the link in the description. And if you'd like to help support this channel, you can also check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. But I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.